we mentioned this in one of our earlier episodes. We have uh, Flutter samples, and I just wanted to make sure everybody knew that we have an index for it that is a curated list of samples. Um, so we're working on a ton of samples right now. I think I have two or three in the pipeline myself, and other people are always making more on the team. But there's also the community. The Flutter community is also cranking out samples, um, which is great. Um, and so I wanted to have an index in our samples repo that had not just the stuff that the you know the Flutter developer relations team was working on, but also just good stuff that the community has made that you know people should also be looking at. Um, and so we put together this index. It's in our samples repo, uh, you know, github.com slash flutter samples, and then look for the index. Um, and you can see a bunch of things in here. Um, there's flutter examples uh, from Nishant. There's, there's uh, another flutter examples. It's a collection of things from one of our GDEs. Um, and we have just a, a ton of stuff in here. Brian Egan's architectural samples that I've pointed a zillion people to. So if you're, uh, Looking for more sample code, you know, you're watching something like this, you are probably interested in Flutter code, uh, and you're looking for more code that's made by people who really know what they're doing, um, check out this index, because you'll see a lot of stuff made by a lot of good people. Um, okay. Okay. We'll so, switch. Yeah, here, you'll take a look at the uh, questions, answer them, go. and I will continue to investigate this bug. Yeah, there we go. Okay, I'm gonna take Dash. There we go. Dash can assist with question mm -hmm. answering. And this brings up an important question. Where are, oh, there, right in front of me. So this open window is where the question, okay. Set you up for success. Smart lady. All right. So we had, um, we had a few come in. We talked about the comment that was helping me find the sensors page in the emulator settings. Thanks again for that. Um, let's see, we had, um, we had somebody ask about whether it's possible to use the block pattern with Angular Dart. Um, and yes, it is. Um, one of the things people like about block, uh, and one of the things it was designed for actually, was code reuse between uh, Dart for web and Flutter. Um, so block generally will be pure, you know, it's just uh, business logic component. So it's taking in input on a stream and it's outputting its output on another stream. There's not widgets involved generally in a, in a block. Um, it's just pure Dart code, um, and so one of the one of the benefits of that is that it can run on both platforms. Uh, it can run both on mobile and web, and that's part of what it's designed for. So, um, to answer your question, yes. All right, um, we had another question come in from someone whose YouTube account has Location Services as their name. Is Location Services? Uh, well. Uh, Mr. or Miss Services. Um, thank you for, for commenting, asking about importing a file uh, as a file versus importing a file as a package. So um, if you, do you mind flicking, flipping yeah. real quick, just to any file in Android Studio or something, just so we can look. So all the way at the top, oh, sorry, a Dart file. Um, there we go. So at the top here, we have import package flutter slash services dot Dart which is being imported as a package. You know, it's, that's how it's being recognized. Um, you uh, can import things like in that same way, even if they're in your own projects. If you're working on an app and you, you have two files, you know, one that's called main.dart and another one called widgets.dart, you can import that one as a uh, project, even though it's a local file just sitting in your project, or you can import it as a local file. There's two ways to do it. Um, it doesn't really matter which way you do it. Um, the only important thing is that you pick one and stick to it. So um, if you, imp and the reason is, if you import a file as package, you know, colon, your app name, slash, and then the file in one place, and then import it as import, you know, direct just, just direct path in another, Dart actually consider those, considers those two separate namespaces. Um, and so it will create two sets of class definitions and everything else even though all the code is in the same file. Uh, it has to do with the way it, it handles the imports. Uh, that's something they're looking at maybe changing uh, further down the line, but for right now, that is the case. It considers them two separate namespaces. So if you get, uh, you know, you have an object that you allocated in one of those files and you're using it in some code that was using a, uh, that was using the import that was done in a different way, you can get a type conflict and it'll look really weird. It'll be like, you know, type, you know, customer record is not equal to type customer record. And you're like, what are you talking about? I may, you know, this came from this. I only have one customer record class declaration in my whole project. 
but because it's imported in two separate ways, it counts as two. Uh, personally, I just do the package way for everything. Um, everybody, you know. And I just, I actually like to do the direct pathway. You do it the exact opposite. <laughs> per, but the reason is I like that is it helps for me to distinguish between the files that I'm writing and pack other packages that I mm. import. Um, but it comes down to personal preference, I suppose. Yeah, like I said, it's really, you know, pick but one way. Consistent. Yeah, pick one way and go with it. It's like uh, when you're chopping up vegetables to roast them. You know, you just pick a size and go with it. So. Um.